So the other day we got this train wreck in Hoboken, New Jersey. And, you know, I'm sure there's a whole lot more to it. I just kind of very shortly glanced at it. And I've been talking about how all of these Amtrak derailments that have been happening in the news, they've been really big stories and whatnot, they all seem to be connected to sports championships. And this train wreck, I'm pretty sure, is connected to the Chicago Cubs being in the World Series. And I'll show you why in a second. But I just want to show a quick example. I always talk about it. Back, we had the last Amtrak derailment that we had, the big one, was in Chester, Pennsylvania. A lot of them seem to go back to Pennsylvania as well. We had the Philadelphia train wreck last year in 2015 on May 12th. And it was connected to the Golden State Warriors winning the NBA Finals that year. That train wreck happened at 9.23 p.m. 66 days later, we had the movie Train Wreck come out that has LeBron James in it. LeBron James and Jewish Gematria equals 923. In that movie, Amy Schumer's character is 9 years old in the opening scene. The rest of the movie takes place 23 years later. And it was super connected to Pope Francis's visit. And the last place he visited was Philadelphia. But he came to America on his 923rd day as Pope. And the next day he went to the White House at 923 on September 23rd, 923. And of course, the Golden State Warriors are the team that have the big connection to Philadelphia. They were even originally from Philadelphia. They were the Philadelphia Warriors. Anyway, last year we had the Chester Amtrak derailment. There was another one in Kansas that was connected to the Golden State Warriors losing now after I look back on it. But the one in Chester was the last one that happened on April 3rd. And what I discovered as I was looking, looking at it was that one of the Golden State Warriors was just recently picked up before this train derailment happened. And he was from Savannah, Georgia. And that's where the train was actually going when it derailed. It was going to Savannah, Georgia. And it was Jordan McRae. There's a whole bunch of stuff connected to Michael Jordan. Think about the parallels of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and there's all kind and LeBron James. There's all kinds of stuff. And it, a lot of it goes back to Philadelphia. Kobe's originally from Philadelphia. Jordan played his last game against Philadelphia. The Cavs coach, Tyron Liu, played in that game with Michael Jordan even. And he played with Kobe in the, the beginning of Kobe's career. I mean, it's just, it's so interrelated and interwebbed. But anyway, in the very last regular season game, I believe it was, the Pistons beat the Cleveland Cavaliers 112 to 110. And that's a total score of 222. The word Amtrak equals 222. And Jordan McRae just so happened to be the lead scorer of that game. Comes out of nowhere. He's the leading scorer in their final game. And there's a whole lot more to it. I just wanted to point it out that this the train was going to a place that he lived. The Cavs just picked him up. There's a whole bunch of stuff that connected to the death of Merle Haggard as well. But just wanted to point it out, I guess, this guy from Savannah, Georgia, the Cavs pick him up. Then there's the Amtrak derailment. And, you know, he was even connected to Philadelphia as he broke the, the most points scored in the game in the D-League that year for the... The 87ers, the D-League team for the 76ers. And then one month, 26 days later, it got broke by Russ Wilson. And McRae did it on January 26th, 126. And they scored 61 and 65 points. That If you add that up, 126. A whole bunch of 126. Moral of the story, he was connected to the NBA Finals. And that was the last Amtrak we got. I'm sorry for rambling, but... If you write out Hoboken, it equals 43 with the K exception. So just interesting, it actually connects back to the Chester, Pennsylvania Amtrak derailment. Also, for most of the day, they had this headline on there, one dead, more than 100 injured. So they wanted you to see 101. If you write out Philadelphia and Gematria, Philadelphia equals 101. They also make sure to let you know that Chris and they only have one game left. So if they win tomorrow, it'll be 103 wins. If they don't win, it's still interesting with 113 because the Steve Bartman incident was all about the number 113. That was the seat number that he sat in. 
Anyway, let's get to the point. So I looked up Hoboken, New Jersey, and it just so happens to be, it's disputed, but it says that it's the location of the first ever recorded baseball game. And I thought, man, this Amtrak derailment definitely connected then. That baseball game was even played on October 6th of 1845, which is exactly 100 years before the curse of the billy goat began. Also, the word prophecy equals 106 in Gematria. And of course, you know, 45 is a very special number in regards to Chicago and the Cubs. Cubs equals 45. Wrigley equals 45. Illinois equals 45. The curse was in the year 45. I've also talked about the film I Pet Goat on YouTube. And in that, I think it's connected to the curse of the billy goat and whatnot. And in that movie, Obama winks at 106. So just interesting, the first ever game supposedly played on 106. The curse of the billy goat also happened on that day 100 years later. And the reason all this is interesting is because we also got an article in the news that day about the Cubs and the Pirates game was stopped by rain, and it was the first tie in the Major League Baseball since 2005. So it was the same day as this train crash. And a while back I was talking about the 1991 World Series in regards to the stabbing at the Minnesota Mall. I talked about how it was in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and I, it was connected to the movie Charlie St. Cloud. The Red Sox and the Yankees played that day. In the movie, his brother Sam, Cla Sam St. Cloud dies in a car wreck in the seventh inning. And he dies because he's a huge fan of baseball. He loves the Red Sox. But he dies in the seventh inning of the Yankees playing the Red Sox. And it supposedly takes place in 2005. But I will get into that as we move a little bit farther here. Anyway, in regards to that, so Ty equals 114. They made sure to let us know that Chris Christie said there was 114 people in it. Ty also equals 34 in Gematria, and the Cubs were playing the Pirates. Pirates equal 34. They also equal 88, just like Curse of the Billy Goat. The Cubs also stayed on 57 losses. If you write out the word World Series, World Series equals 57. Also, it when it came to a tie after the in the middle of the sixth, sixth inning equals 147, just like World Series the big way. And then of course it's fitting for the Amtrak derailment because the Cubs stayed on 101 wins. And of course, you know, this one says 100 injured, one dead all day long. They wanted you to see the 101. So as I kept reading the article about the tie, they said the last time that there was a tie in Major League Baseball was June 30th, 2005. It was Houston versus Cincinnati. And Houston, they're not going to make the playoffs, but it's undeniable how much Houston stuff has been involved in the script. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. I was watching the Chiefs game a few weeks ago. They were talking about how Houston was hurt on defense. Then on the Monday night game, they zoomed in on, well, I can't even remember what game it was. They zoomed in on that guy named Houston. And we got J.J. Watt being injured from Houston. Houston equals 112. We're going into the 112th World Series. Houston's hosting Super Bowl 51. Also in 2005, the World Series was the 101st World Series. And the Cubs have 101 wins. This train wreck. They want you to see the 101 Chicago also won the World Series that year. The White Sox, they won for the first time in 88 years. They beat the Houston Astros. Like I said, the curse of the Billy Goat is all about 88. I'll leave a link in the description of the Steve Barton incident. I talk all about the number 88 in regards to the Cubs and whatnot. But notice that this tie in 2005, June 30th, 2005, to the Beginning of the World Series that year, a span of 114 days. And also the game went to the seventh inning before being called the tie. And in the movie Charlie St. Cloud, like I said, his brother, they leave and they get in a car wreck and they leave during the seventh inning stretch. It also happened 11 years ago in 91 days. 
So 91 days and 11 years before the Cubs tied. Interesting because Chicago Cubs equals 91. The score was even tied 1-1, one one, possibly significant with the 11. It was on a date numerology of 54, baseball equals 54. Talked about the first ever baseball, Major League Baseball game being played on May 4th, 5-4. Exactly five months, four days before the Great Chicago Fire in 1871. 145 years ago, coming up. Which sticks out because Chicago, Illinois equals 145. The Cubs in their 145th season. The Cubs even picked up Chapman from the Yankees this year. Chapman's wearing number 54, but they picked him up on the 112th day of the season. We're going into the, you know, the 112th World Series. The day they picked him up, they even lost to the White Sox 5-4. to four. Another interesting thing in regards to 101 is this tie and this train wreck happened 26 days before the World Series. The 26th prime number is 101. 101 is a day even, 10-1, the day that leaves 91 days in the year. Once again, connecting to the Chicago Cubs. We also had the train derailment on Pi Day. It was called the Shimarin Amtrak derailment that was in uh, Kansas. And it had 145 people originally reported on board. It was going to Chicago, Illinois. That equals 145. If you write out Shimarin or however you say that, it has identical gematria to Chicago Cubs. If you go from that train wreck to the day that the Cubs tied and the other train wreck, a span of 199 days, the 46 prime number, 199. So, you know, moral of the story, I'm telling you, they're showing us the year 2005 when Chicago won the World Series. Not the Cubs, but the White Sox. I, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the Rangers. And from what I've been following, I feel like it might be the Cubs and the Indians. I know I've said, I think the Indians were connected to the Cubs. But... The same day that we got this tie, we also got the Indians and Detroit being postponed. And I made a video a while back about how I said the Indians and the Cubs, both of their curses, are connected to Detroit. Cleveland in regards to a trade of Rocky Colavito, and then the Cubs were playing Detroit when they got cursed by the curse of the Billy Goat. So it's just interesting. The Indians might even end their season playing Detroit here. Or, I mean, the regular season. If they win tomorrow and then they, they don't beat Detroit, they'll have 94 wins. Cleveland Indians equals 94 the small way. And I could be wrong. Maybe it's connected to the Red Sox because of the Chelsea bombing and whatnot. But all of that connected back to the Minnesota Mall stabbing. And then we got another mall stabbing in Washington, and the killer in the Minnesota mall stabbing, he got shot in Macy's, and then the one in Washington happened in Macy's. And if you've been following what I've been talking about a whole lot, I've talked a lot about the Omaha Indians, and it's just interesting because they're the tribal headquarters of the Omaha Indians is in Macy, Nebraska. The Omaha Indians were even originally from around the area in Ohio. They were called the Maha Indians, so it would connect to the Cleveland Indians possibly. Also, in regards to the Indians coach, he used to be, you know, he won, he broke the curse for the, the Boston Red Sox. He was their coach when they broke the 86-year curse, you know, and then they almost broke it in or they were cursed in the year 86. But anyway, I don't think anybody's pointed out the fact that he was born on the 112th day of the year in 1959, and he's also 57 years old, World Series equals 57. And remember, the Indians beat Detroit 112 days before the 112th World Series. Detroit lost 1 to 12, a lot like 112. Also, the fact that the tie happened against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and in Gematria, Pittsburgh Pirates equals 228. And I talked about how they're both cursed by Detroit and whatnot. 
And the Cubs picked up Errolis Chapman on 725 this year. And Chapman was born on February 28th, 1988. And that was also the exact same day that this guy died. And this is the reason that the, uh, the Indians were cursed because they traded and they got him and they gave away Rocky Colavito, but he died the exact same day the eldest Chapman was born on 228. You know, Pittsburgh Pirates equals 228. This guy's name, Harvey Kuhn, even equals 54. Chapman wears number 54. Baseball equals 54. But he died at the age of 57, like World Series. He also played 57 games with the Cubs. So, I mean... Just very, very interesting in regards to Pittsburgh Pirates equaling 228. And if you go from 228 even, 228 to the day that Chapman came to the Cubs, a span of 148 days, and, you know, Cleveland Indians equals 148. I also, I don't know how it really connects in, but I just found this, and I'm just going to share it really quick. But Cleveland Indians, with the V and S exception, equals 94, right? And they might end with 94 wins this season, or at least the regular season. If you write out Curse of Rocky Colavito, it equals 94. And remember in 1994, that was the year of the strike, the Major League Baseball strike. And that strike began on August 12th, and then the first game for the next season began on April 25th, a span of 256 days. And, you know, of course, Curse of Rocky Colavito, the big way, equals 256. If you write out the word 94, it has identical gematria to World Series. So I don't know how that really fits in, but it's just something to note. If it doesn't connect to this year, it's definitely going to come up at some point in time. I also, during basketball season, was talking about back-to-back -back champions seem to be foreshadowed like crazy back-to-back, back-to-back. I really thought it was for the Warriors, but it just makes me wonder if the Cleveland Cavaliers won and then if the Cleveland Indians are going to win the World Series. 1994 was also the year that Michael Jordan left and went and played baseball, and the Houston Rockets won the NBA Finals that year. So it could be a little interrelated web, you know. Also remember, Michael Jordan retired on October 6th, 10-6. The prophecy, the curse of the Billy Goat, he wore number 45. The curse of the Billy Goat happened on 10-6 in the year 45. And connecting it back to Chicago in the 2005 year that I'm talking about, Michael Jordan signed with the minor league team for the Chicago White Sox, who won the World Series for the first time in 88 years of 2005. If you go from the day that Michael Jordan retired to the day that he signed with the White Sox or the minor league White Sox, a span of 125 days, if you write out Cleveland, Ohio, it equals 125. So who knows? A lot of parallels. There's been lots of Michael Jordan stuff in regards to championships the last few years as well. One last thing I want to point out, and then I, I'm going to go, but... uh. The coach, I forgot to mention, Terry Francona of the Indians. Read down here in regards to the Indians. He was hired on October 6th of 2012. And then it even on Wikipedia, Masonic Wikipedia here, officially introduced on October 8th, the day of the Great Chicago Fire. The Cubs haven't won in 108 seasons. Also, this guy's real name, Terrence John Francona in Gematria, just so happens to equal 199 and 91. Chicago Cubs equals 91. 199, the 46 prime number. Chicago Cubs, the small way, equals 46. And also, if you write out Harvey Edward Kuhn, or however you say that, his full name equals 199, once again connecting to the 46. So, you know, interesting stuff. I, I don't know. I don't even watch baseball. I'm going to start when the playoffs begin, but... uh. I really feel like it might be the Indians and the Cubs. I've been talking about that for a while. I possibly could be wrong. Maybe all of it's foreshadowing to the Red Sox because of 2005 and the movie Charlie St. Cloud and whatnot. 
but I've really been following a Native American theme as well in regards to Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner's even in the movie The Bodyguard, that super connected to Whitney Houston. You know, she died at age 48. Her daughter's name equals 48. Bobby Brown will be 48 the day of the Super Bowl in Houston. Michael Jordan, even born on the 48th day of the year. He even made his professional debut on 4-8 of 1994. So who knows, you know, I'm going to continue to look. Just something to think about. Because I don't know why, I feel like the 94 stuff is somehow connected in here. Especially in regards to that was the year that Houston won the basketball championship and whatnot. So leave it at that. Have a good one. Actually, one last thing. So I guess according to... The first ever baseball game played there, it was played in Hoboken, New Jersey on October 6th, but it was uh, like a scrimmage basically of the same team. Where they played two separate teams was actually on June 19th, and this is like one of the one that's actually known as the first ever baseball game. Interesting that June 19th though, that is King James's real birthday, the real King James. And then LeBron, King James, won the NBA Finals this year on that day in regards to Cleveland. Also in regards to 46, Chicago Cubs equals 46, Chicago equals 46. If you go from October 6th, 1845 to June 19th, 1846, just so happens to be a span of 256 days. So, I mean, how interesting. 256 days, Curse of Rocky Colavito equals 256. Also, what did I say before? Oh, the baseball strike was 256 days long. So, you know, very interesting. Going to leave it at that.